And we're flying along here. Pi flips number 10. E31 is participating state police forces. Police, follow this. State troopers, Operation Clean House. You're getting 10% of that budget, or 50% of that budget, 10% of which will go to your administrative costs, labor, and things like that. So you got $1,255,312.50 per state coming out. And then per state, we have another $1,255,312.50. For lawyers, participating state police forces, troopers, dig it. You have the power. You matter of fact, you have the mandate. As you audit people, starting at the top with the governor's office, and then through the legislature, based on seniority, as you audit these people, if there's inconsistencies, anything, anything, any kind of inconsistencies, whatever, you not only have the power, you have the mandate to indict. To indict. We want our money back from our elected officials. We want their butts gone. We're going to get into political pig in Act 12. Political pigs. I got a perfect example of a political pig that should have been indicted years ago, but was never indicted. Nah, because you got party protection. We're eliminating them. This, they're supposed to be more than just the party in government. It's supposed to be the executive, the judicial, and the legislature. So at any rate, what we're going to do here with you is give you another 10% for pens, pencils, building materials, that, you know, whatever. Because you know you're going to need facilities. We're going after them hard from, once again, the elected officials, all elected officials, all the way down, the exception are judges, sheriffs, fire commissioners. We're not looking for the fire people. We're looking for actual lawmakers is who we're looking at. And you're also going to be inspecting, like, Secretary of State, auditing the inspector, not the inspector general, auditing, um, the insurance commissioners, public works, all those people, all the way down. But we're starting with the elected officials. So now, how are you going to do that? Where's your manpower? 70%. 70%. Dig that. 8,787,187.50 per state goes to hiring accounting armies. Armies of accountants is what I call them. This will create... Now, the way you're going to do this is, what they are is they're scholarship jobs. You have people in here... They have associate's degrees or they got a nice little permission slip from their professor. They do get college credit for this. It's funny, we, we speak of civil involvement, getting the kids involved. Well, this is a way to get them involved. The kids will not know who they're auditing. They don't have a clue. They just know they're auditing somebody and they're going through the numbers. They're looking at like their gas usage, their travel usage, their hotels on taxpayer dollars. Things of that sort is what you're looking for. We don't care about political action committees. We don't care about all that. We care about the pigs. These people getting in there and thinking, oh, well, like Judith Billings, a former SPI. She comes in first day in the job or whatever, first week, whatever. She comes walking and decides she needs a $10,000 desk for her office. That's the kind of crap we're looking for. AIDS couldn't have found a more deserving person. So, at any rate, we got um, the accounting armies. They're going to be students. They work a total of 1,040 hours per year. Per year. They get a cap fee of $10 per hour. It's a part-time position. And then when their contract is up at the end of the year, they get a check for it. We might cut this down into quarters, but we're most likely going to keep it at years. What this will do, at just the state level, will create 844 part-time jobs for accounting students. That's a lot of accountants for your, your army there, state troopers. Nationwide, you've just created 42,200 jobs, part-time jobs, for students who could use that, what will amount to 10,400 at the end of the year to pay their tuition. Let's move on. E32, 10% goes to the insurance commissioner's office. Now, we will be looking at the insurance commissioner's office through the state police forces, but in the meantime, the insurance commissioner needs to work in their own office. And we need to do something at a national level. I've heard a lot of complaints about in, in the medical environment. That was getting all the medical billing coding on the same page. Every facility, every hospital, every doctor's office, everybody out there is on the same page. No office, no nothing different. And it will become a federal mandate and then an international mandate. So... Each state, 50% will go to medical billing, getting that stuff on the same page. The other 50% will actually go to those accounting armies. They get their share of accounting armies as well for the same reasons. They're going to go through and audit themselves. Um, 
I just listened to a gal, a state, uh, assistant state auditor of Washington State, nice gal. She was talking about how um, they did study what part of the problem was. And part of the problem is that um, the state makes a deal. It buys some drugs, for example, at a particular price, and then it has this set price. It never goes through on a daily basis in audits for the most... Um, cost-effective option like you as a customer might go and get some coupons or go to this store this week because they're having a special or that store that week these guys keep going to the same place and keep getting ripped off while everybody else gets a better deal we're going to get into that state store real hard here in a second but that's the idea we're going to start streamlining and the insurance commissioners are each getting this cash that they can go through and streamline they'll be able to create 117 part-time you know, state jobs, which will come out to uh, 1,550 national part-time jobs, all of them at 10 or 1,040 hours per year, $10 an hour capped wage. Participating states general accounting offices. I was really listening closely to that gal. I, don't, I was wondering if she was aware of an investigative report by a reporter named Barry Judd. Judge Barry was able to expose, for example, they had this stack, a stack of um, legal pads. And the state store was paying like $7 for what the average consumer would only pay $2 for. So what did they do? Suddenly Barry wasn't there anymore. And the guy that was in charge of the state store, he was suddenly put in charge of the Public Disclosure Commission. So the participating state general accounting offices, what's going to happen is they're going to audit everyone except DSHS. Then they're getting 10 more percent. See, they got 10 percent, $251,062.50, and not a lot of money, to audit everyone except DSHS. If they're going through to find out uh, what specific groups are paying for this, that, and the other thing. If there's ever a find that the state store is paying 10 percent more than suggested retail value on anything, then automatically, automatically, they are to report this to participating state police forces who will be in there. At that point, everybody in charge of that state store, the deputy in charge, the managers in charge, everybody except the actual warehouse people themselves, it's not their fault, is canned. They're going to follow that paper trail and they're going to find out if there's any kickbacks going on and why in the hell would a state store manager pay more than what you can get it for down at the local store, especially when you're buying in bulk like they are. Somebody's getting a little squeeze, a little kickback somewhere. We're going to find out who they are, and we're throwing their asses in jail. It's that simple. And they're going to stay there for a real long time, because under the Acts of Providence, financial terrorism and economic treason are the same things. You are treasonous Americans. You are stealing from your people, and you are going to go to jail on the charges of treason. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, you're hearing me hard on this. So 10% will be audit, used to audit DSHS. Very first focus will be Children's Protective Services, followed by Adult Protective Services. Then you're going to audit the state store itself. Inside now, we want to know who knew what when. So you got over here a million four thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Forty-five percent of that fund is to dissect that state store. What we're looking at are very specific people who are buying from the state store starting with the superintendent of public instructions office, the school districts, the community colleges, K through 12, DSHS, a special report all the way down on every item. How much is it at the state store? How much is it from three different retailers? How much is it if you would have bought it bulk directly from the manufacturer? If there's anything Anything that's over $10,000 in aggregate in that whole state store, if it shows $10,000 in overpaid retail, everybody's indicted along the way. Some assistant managers, maybe some supervisors, they might want to go ahead and say, well, I protested. Well, show me in writing that you protested. If you can show me that in writing, you will not be indicted. Other than that, you better allocate your ass off. When it comes to armies of accountants, You'll have 1,004,250 a year. It'll create 96 part-time positions per state to go through and do that. The same principle, 1,040 hours a year, $10 an hour. Nationwide, this will create 4,800 part-time jobs for accounting students. You tell the kids to get involved in civics. This is their chance to get involved in civics. How can you tell them no, lawmakers? Unless, of course, you have something to hide.